Hey Kaiju fans, I'm Monster Island Buddies, and today we'll be looking at the space monster, Orga. Orga! That's me! What did you think this human could properly tell my life story? That's right, boys and girls, Orga's in the house! I was Godzilla's first kaiju opponent of the Millennium series, appearing at the end of the 1999 film Godzilla 2000 Millennium. Born when Millennium aliens absorbed Godzilla's DNA, including Organizer G1, into their collective form, I was a strapping young lad with Godzilla's strength and regenerative powers at my command. Of course, since I had just come into existence, I had a bit of trouble against Earth's mightiest monster. I survived as long as I did, mostly by spamming the heal button. Throughout the fight, I tried to absorb more of Godzilla's DNA to become a perfect clone. That could have gone better. After my big screen debut, I scraped by with a few roles in video games and comics until Toho finally came to their senses and gave me a cameo in the beginning of Godzilla Planet of the Monsters. The prequel novel, Monster Apocalypse, goes into more detail about that incident, which is just another reason to write your senator to demand an official translation. <laughs> Talking about my behind-the-scenes creation sort of strains the plausibility of this crossover, but hey, it's part of the format. Illustrators, including Shinji Nishikawa, Yasushi Tarasawa, and Hideo Okamoto submitted a number of radically different preliminary concept designs for me. According to Okamoto, one early idea was a humanoid monster similar to Gaira, but with grotesque, abnormally large hands and arms. These were carried over into my final design, in the form of my magnificent three-fingered claws. Ultimately, special effects director Kenji Suzuki approved an approximately 30 centimeter tall clay maquette as the basis for my Phase 1 form instead. My mouth and Phase 2 form were both based on concept art by Nishikawa. The basic design of the Amalgam Millennium came from Kenji Suzuki, who requested that the character resemble a space octopus. Torisawa and Nishikawa answered the call, though Nishikawa's design would ultimately win out. While my Millennium stage was betrayed entirely through CGI, a large cutout of its concept art served as a stand-in dummy prop for fine-tuning camera angles during filming. I was portrayed by two suits and a prop, all made or supervised by seasoned monster modeler Shinichi Wakasa. Wakasa and Suzuki decided to base my head on the TriStar Godzilla so that audiences could see, quote, the Japanese Godzilla defeat the American Godzilla. That might also be why I tried to replace Godzilla. Makoto Ito, a stuntman at the beginning of his long career with the Kamen Rider franchise, wore both suits. The Phase 1 suit featured a radio-controlled mouth mechanism. It could be equipped with three possible pairs of arms, one with movable claws and the other stationary. The Phase 2 suit, depicting me after I absorbed more of Godzilla's DNA, combined pieces reused from the first suit with some newly modeled segments. This one featured a gaping maw large enough to fit the upper half of the Godzilla suit, along with a number of tracking markers to aid the VFX team in creating my tentacle like inner mouth, which was done purely in CGI. The prop blown to pieces by Godzilla's final attack was made out of spare pieces from both suits. Only half of it was fully completed, since it would only be filmed from one angle. Unlike the actual suit, the prop also featured a fully molded piece from my mouth. Also, since I was the result of a freak mutation, my body is bilaterally asymmetrical, meaning my right and left sides are completely different. <laughs> It was originally a group of individual millennials, aliens who had fled their distant home planet following a sudden crustal deformation. They embarked on a long journey through space in a solar-powered ship, which was only able to house a couple hundred individuals. At one point, they discarded their bodies and transplanted their consciousness into a special fluid, becoming one collective entity. Eventually, we, yeah, I'm using we now, crash-landed in the Pacific Ocean, sinking to depths the sun rays couldn't reach, and went dormant for 60 million years! Reawakened after a submarine shined its lights on us, our UFO flew off looking for genetic material to make our form stable and allow us to adapt to Earth's atmosphere. Once we discovered Godzilla, we decided that he was the ideal vessel to establish a thousand-year kingdom on this planet. Our scanners detected Organizer G1 in his cells, which granted him incredible regenerative powers. Godzilla escaped from us during our first encounter, but we were able to extract his DNA in Tokyo after dropping a building on top of him. Combining our biomass into a single physical form, we emerged from the UFO, unprepared for the volatile properties of Godzilla's DNA. So we mutated into me! 
Godzilla Project Mechagodzilla, the second prequel novel for the anime movies, presented two theories on my origins. Because of the extraterrestrial component to my DNA, one thesis stated that I was an alien life form who arrived on Earth in ancient times and laid dormant until 2022. Other researchers thought I was either related to Godzilla or one of his spawn, and speculated the same about Zilla and Biollante. Yeah, people with doctorates seriously considered that I might be Zilla's brother. No wonder they had to flee the planet. Moments after I was born, I faced a challenge from an enraged Godzilla. Even with command of the Millennium UFO, I couldn't overcome the power of the King of the Monsters. However, my healing factor meant that Godzilla was unable to deliver a killing blow, as I instantaneously regenerated from every wound he inflicted. Once I closed the distance, I bit Godzilla and drained more of his DNA, gaining the green, scaly texture of his skin. As a last resort, I unhinged my jaw and attempted to consume Godzilla whole, a process I believed would finally turn me into a perfect clone of my enemy. As I engulfed him head first, I began mutating further, sprouting replicas of his huge purple dorsal plates. He retaliated by emitting a powerful burst of atomic energy, and not the fun kind, while inside me, obliterating the entire upper half of my body. What was left of me fell over and crumbled into dust. While watching the battle from afar, journalist Yuki Ikenozi commented, Boy, that's ironic. It woke up after 60 million years, and then Godzilla destroyed it the very next day. I was one of the many monsters to menace the world in the 21st century attacking Ankara, the capital of Turkey. As explained in the Monster Apocalypse, I arrived in Izmir, the site of a massive African refugee camp, on May 11th, 2022. After the military killed me in Ankara, talk about humiliating, the Turkish government gave an official death toll of 1.15 million. However, had they included refugee deaths, the number would have been over 10 million. That begs the question, were they trying to make themselves look better, or me look worse? Even Kamakaris managed to kill 2.5 million back in 99, my signature attack is a yellowish blast of energy from the cannon housed in my shoulder, or above my head in the manga. Various awestruck sources call this the wave motion beam, shoulder cannon, pulsating plasma bullets, or most prominently, destructive motion attack. It sent Godzilla hurtling backwards the only time I used it. I'm able to heal at a speed greater than even Godzilla, regenerating from injuries almost as soon as I receive them. But it's not perfect, like Godzilla's comparatively slower healing factor. I couldn't regrow my shoulder cannon after he blasted it away. As I'll explain later, this ability is a bit more dramatic in Rulers of Earth. I can absorb an opponent's DNA through my teeth, slowly changing into a copy of them in the process. Unhinging my jaw and swallowing them whole speeds things up. Though, it's not the greatest strategy against, for example, monsters with breath weapons. The Millennians used telepathy to pilot our ship, hack computers, transmit messages onto dramatically positioned screens, and lasso Godzilla with underground cables. My own telepathic ability, as Orga, has the fancy name of Super Psychokinesis. This grants me total control over the Millennium UFO, with which I could perform a super telekinetic attack. Basically another cool name for how I use the UFO as a battering ram or shield to deflect Godzilla's atomic breath. I can leap up to 100 meters in the air, with a vertical distance of up to 300 meters. I use this ability to distract Godzilla while my UFO rammed him from the side. Some might say that I am slow and inexperienced, but I've got more strength than I know what to do with. One of my uppercuts dazed Godzilla, leaving him open to the destructive motion attack. In Pipeworks Godzilla games, I basically become a professional wrestler. My moves consist of heavy melee and grappling attacks where I use my massive hands to pummel and manhandle monsters. I can also temporarily stun my opponents by spitting green globs at them. This move is called Plasma Spit in Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee and Paralyzing Goo in Save the Earth and Unleashed. My rage attack in the first two games is called Berserk and Shoulder Cannon Overload, respectively, and is pretty much self-explanatory. I have pretty much the same role in the Godzilla 2000 manga adaptation by Mondo Takimura as I do in the movie, with one big change. I'm a lot scarier! Instead of just unhinging my jaw and letting Godzilla charge headfirst into my mouth, I tried to swallow him by transforming into a giant Godzilla-faced blob! It's st I, it still didn't work, though. Another note on the manga, rather than a squid, the Millennials took on this insane form after absorbing the Big G's DNA, which became even more terrifying once we realized our body was rejecting Organizer G1. Before that, we gave a monologue about our history and intentions for Earth by copying the form of Io Shinoda. Wait a minute, what the hell? I never signed off on this! I tell you, big franchises are like the ocean. Dive deep enough and you'll see things better left in the dark. 
My roars in the original Japanese version of Godzilla 2000 are recycled from Cretaceous King Ghidorah's cries in Rebirth of Mothra 3. My revamped roars in the American version, on the other hand, include the voice of Natalia Adams, the daughter of sound effect editor John Adams. I'm a playable character in all three of the Godzilla console games developed by Pipeworks. Aside from Biolante in the Wii version of Godzilla Unleashed, I happen to be the only character with a perfect attack score. In the GameCube version of Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee, I'm the most difficult character to unlock, requiring the player to beat Adventure Mode with Godzilla 2000 after unlocking every other monster. Taking Godzilla 2000 through Action Mode in Godzilla Save the Earth allows the player to face me aboard the Vortac Mothership in a special challenge. I start the battle in the form of the Millennium UFO, then a giant version of the Millennium who can only be damaged by throwing buildings. In Unleashed, I'm a member of the Aliens faction, working with the Vortac to collect power surge crystals. I also appear in Godzilla Unleashed Double Smash, where I'm the second boss of the Sydney level, and where my in-game model looks kinda like Gluttony from Full Metal Alchemist, as well as the Japan-only mobile game Godzilla Kaiju Collection. Finally, I showed up in Godzilla Rulers of Earth during a melee between Gigan, an old cryog ship recovered from Area 51, Godzilla, and Mogira in Las Vegas. After the ship drew Godzilla's DNA, Gigan accidentally released me when he hit it with his sickles. I went after Mogira first, then tried to eat Gigan when Godzilla threw him into me. He didn't like that for some reason. Then, as if I hadn't suffered enough, this goofy looking robot called Jet Jaguar flew into my mouth before ripping me apart with a sudden size change. Wait, wait hold up! This kind of looks like my death in the manga, doesn't it? Well, anyway, that wasn't enough to kill me, but the ship still had to beam me up and retreat into space. The Cryogs never deployed me again, although artist and co-author Matt Frank thought of the power-stealing Trilopods as a species that the Crylogs altered with my DNA. So that epic battle in the last issue, 32 Kaiju and 3 Mechas, I made it all possible. You're welcome. That's all there is to know about me, at least in the so-called canon. If you want to see what I'm like as a film critic, head on over to the Monster Island Buddies channel. Thanks for watching. It's all Orga now. Yeah. <laughs>